Mella Fetter Conjley with Intero Real Estate. In today's episode of Real Talk for Real Estate, I have a special guest. I have Tyler Dahl of the, from the law offices of Tyler Q. Dahl here in Sacramento. And today we're talking about estate planning and trusts. Yeah. Tyler, my first question for you today is, tell us what is probate? Okay, yeah, so probate is, kind of give you an example. So. You know, when somebody passes away, their name might still be on certain assets, right? A, a good example is a home. Their name is on title of a home. Well, for example, if that person's children or spouse comes and tries to sell that property, that's going to be an issue because there's now a deceased person on title. Okay. So what, 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 the, what the family members need to do is go through probate. Now, probate is basically just um, this court-supervised process in which you know uh, somebody, a deceased person's name is cleared from these assets uh -huh. and then transferred to, you know, the, the owners, whether it be the children or or anybody else, uh, according to the law or any other estate planning documents they might have. So uh, probate takes around a year to a year and a half, if not longer, to wow. complete. And then again, just an example of the fees involved. You know, looking at three hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars, you know, you can probably plan on about twenty thousand dollars of that going straight to court costs, attorneys' fees, and you know, um, you know, appraiser fees and things of that nature. Okay, so probate is expensive. Yes. And it can take a long time. Yes, exactly. Okay. Second question related to that: Are there ways in which you can avoid probate? Yes, there are. There's some more dangerous ways, but the best way, mm -hmm. obviously, is to get a revocable living trust. Uh, and so, uh, the revocable trust, how it works, is essentially you're signing it during your life, and then you're transferring assets to this revocable living trust to to make it not subject to probate, right? Okay. And so you're kind of taking assets that would otherwise have to go through the court, and you're putting them in this trust that, you know, everything can be handled outside of the court, and so that's the idea behind the trust. Okay, so the trust can avoid probate. Are there other benefits to having a trust? Yeah, absolutely. For example, you may have, uh, you know, if, if you have minor children or younger children that might not be able to manage a significant amount of money very well, you can say that they might not get their share until they turn, you know, 30 or 45. I've had clients say 65, oh, wow. right? <laughs> uh, you can make them take drug tests before they get their money, or you can you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. And so, okay. you know, there's some there's some other obvious there's some other benefits to having the revocable trust. Okay, so the trust is going to make it easier to transfer assets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also going to put some restrictions so you can kind of control how things happen. Yes. And it sounds like it would save you money then as well. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, another question is, do I need a will in addition to a trust, or what's the difference between a trust and the will? Yeah, so the, a will really only becomes effective when you pass away. Okay. okay. And the trust becomes effective immediately when you sign it. So the will doesn't, again, doesn't really have any legal meaning until you pass away. Mm -hmm. So if you have a will, your estate will still need to go through probate. Now, mm -hmm. if you have a trust, you should also have a will, uh, it's called a pour over will, just make mm -hmm. sure that all the assets get transferred to the trust and then the trust is where you indicate who receives those assets. So if you have a trust, you should also have a will. Okay. But if you have just a will, mm -hmm. your estate will still need to go through probate if okay. you pass away. Okay, so a uh, few things that are important there. The trust mm -hmm. saves you money. Mm -hmm. Probate is expensive, cost then takes time, yeah. and a will can help with some of that, but doesn't really handle all of the issues. Right, a will alone is probably insufficient for, for, for most Californians, for, for many of them. Okay, great. And now a couple of other um, things that I've heard terms, and maybe you can explain those. Um, tell me, what is a healthcare directive, and why do I need one? So a healthcare directive is, in this document, you're, you're essentially nominating somebody else to make healthcare decisions for you if you ever become mentally incapacitated. It could be an accident, old age, uh, you know, uh, dementia, whatever the case may be. Okay. You've got somebody there to make healthcare decisions for you. Also, too, uh, you indicate your end-of-life wishes in this document. So, for example, if you were in an irreversible coma, do you want treatment? This is, these are difficult questions. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, having your desires in this document will make sure that not only does the person you nominate have to comply with those, uh -huh. but that of course your your, your desires are, are are known in a, a legal document, right? And, and if you don't have a healthcare directive, 
and then you become incapacitated. Then, much like probate, the uh -huh. court has to get involved. Got it. Okay, and so um, that's again. These documents are to ensure that every all of your matters are handled outside of court. Okay, and then um, the other term that I've heard is uh, financial power of attorney. Mm -hmm. What is a financial power of attorney, and why do I need one? Very similar to the healthcare directive, in the financial power of attorney, you're nominating somebody else to manage your finances for you. Uh, and this is, of course, most of the time that we do it. If if, if you're incapacitated, then it then it becomes valid. For mm -hmm. married couples, we have it effective immediately so that you know more for convenience for married couples uh -huh. if one wants to call about the other's retirement plan you know they won't tell them to go get the other spouse right? oh, okay and then you know like like the health care directive if you do become incapacitated and you don't have this document then mm -hmm. more often than not more likely than not your family is going to have to go to court in order to get that power to start acting on your behalf so the health care directive uh -huh. and the financial power of attorney are there to ensure that during your life there is somebody there to make financial and healthcare decisions for you. Okay. And I think one, one important thing to note is that when you pass away, mm -hmm. the healthcare directive and the financial power of attorney, those documents basically go away. They have minimal usefulness after you pass away. Uh -huh. And that's kind of when your will and your trust would then kick in and start, start to take some more meaningful effect, right? Okay. So, uh, that because that, that, that's a big question that I get from a lot of clients. As they well. don't understand how those all work together. Exactly, exactly. All right. Well, great. So I, I hope uh, our information today has answered some questions for you in a very general sense about estate planning, uh, uh, trusts, and wills. For additional information, feel free to contact Tyler directly. Tyler can be reached at? 916-545-2790. Uh, Tyler, Dahl, last name, D-A-H-L. We pop up right up on Google, too, as well. So Great. Tyler, thank you so much uh, for your time, and um, I hope some of our viewers will contact you. And if you have any additional questions about real estate, give me a call. It's Mella at Intero, 916-792-7362.